You've heard all kinds of healthy eating tips. Don't eat carbs, don't eat fats, don't eat sugar. There's a lot of confusing information out there. There are a lot of people who disagree on what you should and shouldn't eat. There's all kinds of different diets that they recommend you try. Eat the keto diet, eat the paleo diet, eat the Mediterranean diet. You're sure to lose weight on this diet. What does it all actually mean? In this video, I'm going to break healthy eating down for you. I will cover why it matters, some common bad habits and how you can work on changing them, as well as some popular diets and the pros and cons of each. So why is healthy eating important? Everyone's heard you are what you eat. It's important that you take care of your body by feeding it good foods. Eating unhealthy foods can cause obesity, and obesity is associated with five of the top seven most common diseases that cause death in America, including diabetes, stroke, and cardiovascular diseases such as chronic heart failure and heart attack. In America, 74% of Americans are considered overweight, and 43% are obese. Overeating is one of the leading factors of these statistics, and it can be contributed to some of our bad habits. More on that later. When you eat foods that are good for you, like fruits and vegetables, you're giving yourself the tools that your body needs to perform its daily functions. Fruits and vegetables have a ton of fiber, which allows you to stay regular and helps decrease your overall LDL cholesterol and increase your HDL cholesterol, thus giving you a healthy, balanced cholesterol. The vitamins and minerals in fruits and vegetables support a healthy immune system so that you're less likely to get sick. And if you do get sick, you're more likely to have mild symptoms and you're less likely to end up in the hospital. Moreover, healthy foods give you good nutrients to maintain healthy skin, healthy hair, and promote good muscle growth, keeping you looking and feeling your best. If you're eating healthy and drinking plenty of water, then you'll have more energy and less pain as well. Drinking water and staying hydrated helps move waste out of the body. If you work out really hard and you're overwhelmingly sore, that's caused by lactic acid. When you drink water and use the bathroom, you are removing the lactic acid that has built up in your body. Your kidneys process that lactic acid into urea and help you get it out of your body. That lactic acid, as I said, is what's causing that soreness. And so as you get rid of it, that will help you to be less sore faster. Next, let's talk about common eating habits that contribute to unhealthy eating. Everyone is guilty at some point of snacking on the couch. In fact, our brains will start to create a positive correlation between sitting on the couch and eating food. In psychology, this is called a conditioned behavior. After you've developed a conditioned behavior, you start to crave food every time you sit on the couch. Another common bad habit is overeating. The average American eats well over 3,000 calories per day, which is almost double what people need to eat each day. The last bad habit is eating empty calories. Once I started eating healthy, when I went and ate something like potato chips or candy, I wouldn't get any feeling of, sati of satiation afterwards. That was when I truly learned the meaning of empty calories. It has made it easier for me to opt for healthy snacks like a banana or nuts and seeds because I actually feel like there's something in my stomach after I eat and I feel better and more fulfilled. What are a few ways you can start changing these bad habits? First, when you snack on the couch, try to change the association with food. Maybe pour a glass of water and sip on that rather than grabbing a bag of potato chips and mindlessly eating out of it. You can opt for healthier snack options, like veggie straws or bare apple crisps. Alternatively, you can find something else to do with your hands and cut out snacks altogether. Get yourself a poppet, and every time you sit on the couch and watch your favorite TV show or veg out, start playing with a poppet to give your hands something to do to distract yourself from the impulse to eat. Additionally, you could try out some new hobbies, such as taking up knitting or doing something in a different area of the house, like coloring an adult coloring book at the table. 
The main goal here is to try to break the brain's association between the couch and food. If you want to eat less, there are a few techniques to make this easier. The most obvious one is to put less food on your plate. One way that you can do this is to put the amount of food that you would normally eat onto your plate and then just use a spoon and scrape a little bit back into the serving dish. Something that they do in Japan is to put several different types of foods onto several smaller plates. If you've ever been to a Japanese restaurant, you've probably experienced this. They bring out a little bowl of miso soup, and then they bring out a separate bowl of ginger salad, and then when they actually bring your food out, it's either on several different plates if it's sushi, and if you get a bento, it is organized into five different sections on the plate. By putting a variety of food on several smaller plates, not only are you eating more variety, but you're also eating less. In the book Ikigai by Hector Garcia and Francesc Morales, they talk about a concept called harahachibu, which means that you only fill your stomach 80%. This means that you don't experience a long digestive period and it decreases how much you actually eat. By eating less, the book states that this doesn't weigh down your body and increases your overall longevity. When you eat on several smaller plates and apply this concept of harahachibu, you are tricking yourself into thinking that you've eaten more than you actually ate, which helps you eat less overall. For our last bad habit, let's talk about eating healthy snacks. This one is actually pretty simple. You just have to make changes to your grocery list. First, I want you to stop going into the snack aisle because you're not gonna eat that food anymore. You need to get unhealthy snacks out of the house, period. Find similar items to make the changes a little bit less drastic. As I said earlier, instead of potato chips, you can eat bare apple crisps or like snap veggie straws. I usually see the snap veggie straws on an end cap in the produce aisle, so if you pick them up there, that can help you avoid the snack aisle altogether. I will tell you, however, that these are still snack foods. When I eat them, it still feels like eating empty calories. It's hard to transition from empty calories to healthful options. If you have the discipline, then you can skip this step altogether and just start eating fresh apples and seeds and nuts. Some of my favorite seeds and nuts are pistachios, which are high in dietary fiber, and sunflower seeds, which have a lot of healthy fats in them. Since we're talking about fats, let's talk a little bit about what actually makes food healthy. I'm sure you've heard people say, don't eat a lot of fat. However, the Mediterranean diet, which is associated with longevity and supercentenarians, is a high-fat, high-carb diet. In fact, some research has found that many people eating the Mediterranean diet actually go over their recommended fat intake, yet they have healthier cardiovascular systems and they weigh less than people eating the American diet. That's because the American diet is high in saturated fats whereas the Mediterranean diet is high in unsaturated fats. So what is the difference? It all comes down to chemistry. I'm not going to try to overcomplicate things for you by breaking down the chemical bonds in the fats. There are a lot of other videos that can explain that if that's something that you're interested in, and I'll have a few good ones linked in the description. What you need to know is that it's harder for your body to break down and actually use saturated fats, which leads to increased waste and ultimately fat stores. In contrast, unsaturated fats decrease fat stores in the body and are essential to brain and cardiovascular health. Foods that are high in unsaturated fats are nuts and seeds, fruits like avocados, and seafood, particularly fatty fish such as salmon and tuna. Common American foods that contain large amounts of saturated fats are butter, red meats like beef and pork, and high-fat dairy products. Alternatives to these foods are plant oils, especially extra virgin olive oil, which is high in unsaturated fats, poultry, such as turkey and chicken, and low or non-fat dairy products. Now I want to talk a little bit about some of the popular diets that are out there. The keto diet is one that's very popular. How does it work? Basically, you cut out carbs and consume large amounts of fats. However, the keto diet does not differentiate between saturated and unsaturated fats. The goal of the keto diet is to encourage the body to consume fats for energy. 
I've known a lot of people who have found great success with the keto diet for losing weight. When you cut out carbs, however, you are essentially starving yourself. Carbs are a key nutrient in the human diet. Nutritionists recommend that your diet should consist of 45-65% to 65% carbs. The keto diet puts your body in ketoacidosis, hence the name keto. This means that you're producing so much acid in your body that your blood pH becomes more acidic than it needs to be. This is very hard on your body. Your body is not intended to exist in a state of starvation. Furthermore, there is some evidence that the keto diet can increase your risk of cardiovascular diseases and stroke because it doesn't differentiate between fats and even encourages you to increase your intake of saturated fats. While many people have found success with this diet, please keep in mind that it's very hard on your body and it can lead to nutritional deficiencies. Another popular dieting technique is intermittent fasting. I had a friend who had a lot of success with intermittent fasting and I hear a lot of people talk about it. Sometimes I inadvertently do it myself, usually when I'm busy in the morning. Basically, there's a set block of time where you fast, and then there are other times where you eat your normal diet. There are several different types of time blocks, such as alternate days, where you eat normally one day and then fast the next, or a 5 to 2 diet, where you eat normally 5 days of the week and then fast for 2, and then setting times each day where you eat and times where you don't eat. The argument for intermittent fasting is that humans struggled to find food when our species was younger, so we would go for a long time without eating, thus intermittent fasting supposedly imitates the diet that we evolved with. The scientist Mark Matson discusses how intermittent fasting leads to what he dubs metabolic switching, which is when your body goes a long period without nutrients and must start to consume sugar stores in order to survive. I think you'll find that the most common form of intermittent fasting is daily intermittent fasting. This is when you fast for 16 hours and eat for 8 hours. Some people go even more extreme, they'll fast for 20 hours and eat for 4 hours. It's totally up to you. It's important to know your daily calorie needs because during those 8 hours where you're allowed to eat, you should still consume enough calories to meet your body's nutritional requirements. If you're doing the 2040 method and you need to consume 1800 calories, that means you have 4 hours to consume 1800 calories, which seems a little difficult to me. Lastly, I want to talk about the Mediterranean diet. This diet is more of a lifestyle and it places emphasis on eating unsaturated fats and eating fruits and vegetables. This is my favorite diet and it's the diet that I follow personally. It replaces butter and fats with extra virgin olive oil and allows you to eat a variety of foods. It tends to be higher in fats and carbs. A plate of food on the Mediterranean diet has roughly 50% fruits and vegetables, 25% protein, and 25% carbs. Throughout the day, you can snack on fruits, vegetables, and nuts, and then limit eating meat to once per day. This diet is great for satiety because you can eat carbs, such as whole grain breads and steel-cut oats, as well as dairy products like yogurt and certain cheeses. The Mediterranean diet allows for a lot of variety, and it tends to be more nutritionally balanced. Since it is a lifestyle, you should have a goal to meet friends and family throughout the week, and it recommends exercising five times a week. This has been my video introducing the concepts of healthy eating. I trust you found it informative and that you have the tools you need to start eating healthy and practicing healthy eating habits today. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Much love, wanderers. Namaste. Thank <music> you.